talk now about the real issues that may dis decide the tide this year. What is the NDC's Trump card in 2024? Let me say it this way. Um, we, we're talking about two major political parties here. Largely one political party, NDC, is a party that stands for conviction. And we are fighting with NPP, a party that largely stands for convenience. And convenience simply means, as far as NPP is concerned, it is just about anything for power. And that's what you're seeing all over. Lack of capacity to be apologetic in the midst of the suffering. They continue to gaslight the people and deceive the people. That really is just not our economic mismanagement at all. It's all because of some external difficulties. That's what the problems are. The city has collapsed. No, it's not because we have mishandled the economy. We are unable to keep our promises and the suffering of the people. No, it's not actually coming from us. It's actually external circumstances. That is a political party that does not believe in truth. That does not believe in truth at all. Doom so is so evident, everybody can see. No, 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 it's not really doom so. It's just, uh, uh, what word do they even use? They, they try to deceive the country, some plants or some uh, uh, equipment that were at fault. Because they simply do not have the courage to say, listen, we actually are confronted with an energy crisis. And this energy crisis has been brought because we are not able to, as it were, keep the system the way it's supposed to be kept. That courage, like for example, John Muhammad, that courage, say, yes, we actually have doom so. And I promise you that we're going to fix it, and he did fix it. So it tells you the main difference between the two political parties. One has a conviction to be able to say, no, things are the way they are. They are difficult. We can do better, and therefore we try to do better. So if there is a crisis, you try to bring the country on board, acknowledge the difficulty, possibly draw views and opinions from everybody in order to be able to come up with solutions. This group believes that, you know what, the ordinary people are, are, are not smart. So just continue deceiving them. Uh, true slogans here and there, lie to them. Hopefully they have even really forgotten about the fact that I made some of these promises that I'm unable to keep. So we are putting two major platforms together. One platform tries to be as candid as possible. The other platform believes that, listen, all I need to do is to continue making promises left, right, and center. Because I, I made a lot of promises ahead of 2016, and somehow I won power. So why not? Let me continue making more promises even without acknowledging that it is my mismanagement that has brought the difficulties that we face today. But the NDC so, is also making significant promises. You're, you're very alike in those promises too. No, if you say we are very alike, it will not be the same. For instance, uh, if you watch our policy platform properly, you know, for example, that as opposed to what we saw ahead of 2016, when there were reckless statements to the effect that uh, you don't actually need to uh, borrow at all, there's so much money that is available in the country. If I come, I don't even need to go and borrow. I can simply toll all the roads in the country and construct every road. I mean, there's so much money at the level of the central bank. There's no need for borrowing. I will just move the country away from transition into production, and every problem will be solved. I can solve the problem of Ghana in 18 years and bring about. So these are reckless promises that were made in 2016. The promises we are talking about are not anything that is reckless. They are things that are realizable because we've been there. You understand? So, for example, we tell you, for example, that on the question of education, we think that there are genuine concerns at the level of the education in the free SHS, for example. We want to ensure that once we come back, we bring all the stakeholders on board in order to have a proper conversation and see how those problems can be resolved. That's a genuine promise. So, these are promises that are much more what you call pragmatic promises based on. Uh, on, on the fact that we've been there, so we know that, listen, you can't lie to people about it. So, you're, so you're, your Trump card is being honest with the Ghanaian people? Being, being a platform of credibility. A platform that is telling you this is what our track record has been. And our track record is there in terms of what it is we achieved with limited resource over a period of eight years and what we accomplished. That, for example, in eight years, with the kind of resource we had, we never, for example, saw the CD depreciate at the level that we have seen over the last eight years. But, but the, the CD depreciation at the level of four CD to the dollar. Today we are talking about f over 15, 15 cities. That track, total, that track total record total by 2016 has led us to an IMF program. Yeah, but then listen, the fact that there's an IMF which, program. Which is, which is a concession. Anytime a government goes there, there's a reason why this government 
didn't want to admit that they wanted to go to the IMF. It's a concession that you failed, and you no. need an external entity no, no. like the IMF to that, come that and again, sit with the king to that regulate again the economy. Is the tragedy they have. That again is the tragedy they have. That they are they are not honest enough to tell the truth to the people of Ghana. Going to the IMF doesn't mean that you have failed. Thank you.